Good morning and welcome to the Daily Share where we pray the word of God and bring it to life in our lives. Number 6 verse 1 to 5. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the Israelites and say to them, if a man or woman wants to make a special vow, a vow of dedication to the Lord is a Nazarite. They must abstain from wine and other fermented drink and must not drink vinegar made from wine or other fermented drink. They must not drink grape juice or eat grapes or raisins. As long as they remain under the Nazarite vow, they must not eat anything that comes from the grapevine, not even the seeds or skins. During the entire period of their Nazarite vow, no razor may be used on their head. Um, if you, As you read this whole passage, it carries on. I think it goes up to verse 21 and it's just describing all the ins and outs of what a Nazarite vow is all about and, and how to come out of it. And how clearly uh, a, the, the Nazarite vow, by the way, Nazarite, not to be mistaken with Nazarene, Nazarite is a special dedication to God or a special vow that um, a person could, could make to God over a certain period of time, kind of like how you sort of go on a fast for a certain period of time. So, so was the Nazarite vow. Um, but then a Nazarene is that sort of uh, depicts the geographical um, origin of that person. So those are two different words which sound, which are very, you know, they sound similar. Anyway, um, so we're on the theme of set apart, being set apart, which is being sanctified. Uh, that, that's being basically being set apart for God or consecrated to God. Clearly, this is, I've kind of picked this deliberately because I'm kind of trying to look at the whole uh, concept of sanctification, of being sanctified from all different angles. This is a very much a physical angle, a very specific um, dedication to God or a very specific uh, way of being set apart or sanctified to God. Um, obviously, we need to bear in mind that this was before the times of Jesus and Jesus did say a time shall come and now is so we're in the time now where those that worship god shall worship him in spirit and in truth so it's not so much about the the, the physical attributes of your dedication to god but the, the the spiritual side like what do you do in that time okay so it's, it's worth emphasizing because it's easy to go through the the mechanical side of the physical motions uh, to say you're dedicated to God and yet your heart is not with, is not with him remember Jesus uh, the word says these people worship me but they worship but they they, they worship me in with their mouths but their heart is not with me so it's important uh, it, during your time of fasting or your time of dedication to God that you uh, your heart is actually with God that's what he wants he wants your heart anyway um so um <laughs> Yesterday we looked at what it means to be set apart. Jesus redefined it. He said, set them apart, sanctify them, Lord, through the truth. Your word is truth. And he was praying for his disciples and asking God to set them apart through the word. That is the first and foremost. Like if you're going to be set apart as a child of God, you have to cling to his word. You have to because even he placed his word about, above his name. You know, a name denotes the person's personality. God has placed his word. His word is the law. His word governs everything. Um, so he said that above everything, above even his name, above his own being, right? God said, I am the I am that I am. Uh, he said his word above all that, above the whole definition of who he is. So uh, clearly his word sets you apart. So when you cling to his word and when you follow his word, not perfectly because you're not capable of being perfect but just wholeheartedly okay and repent where you fall short you know that's that's how you sort of sanctify yourself and we're, we're kind of for me the nazarite vow kind of depicts a way that you can you know the bible says draw near to god and, and he draws nearer to you it, there, there are ways you can set yourself apart and really say, right, I just want to seek God. At the end of the day, when you set yourself apart, it means you're doing things differently. It means you're, it's basically disciplining yourself towards God. Now, I've, you know, I've, I've come across people who, who devote themselves to God in so many different ways. You know, some people just completely do away with social media, for example, because they feel that it's too noisy for them and it stops them from hearing uh, God clearly. Uh, some people, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to redefine the Nazarite vow or anything, but I'm kind of just trying to show how back in the day, 
uh, in a different era, obviously, with different technology, different way of life. Even you could dedicate yourself to God. And so God defined how he wanted people to dedicate themselves. And so now, even in this day and age, there's things you can identify that clearly, clearly make it difficult for you to hear God. Um, and, and, and so you could think of it that way that, yeah, actually it is possible for me to just decide to know what God, and also it's worth, you know, sorry, before I carry on, it's worth noting that the Nazarite vow is for a period of time, but there are examples of people who were, who were, who were vowed to God for life. For example, John the Baptist, he, even his diet was, it, it was very peculiar. He ate, oh, what did he eat now? Was it honey and locusts? Right, and he didn't shave his hair, which was clearly, according to verse five, is a clear hallmark of uh, the Nazarite vow. Um, you know, there's also other; those are the main sort of, you know, um, indications of how John, li- you know, John the Baptist lived his life. And then going back into the Old Testament, we had Samson, who was definitely not supposed to cut his hair, and um, uh, he, he was he was definitely, you know, he was in the Nazarite vow as well. Um, but unfortunately, Samson broke his vows, right? Well, for starters, he kind of shared the secret of where his power came from because God made him so powerful, gave him mighty strength, physical strength. And 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 he shared that secret with Delilah. And so she knew that if you cut his hair, he loses his power. And, and that's exactly what they did. The Philistines got him. He lost his power. And then there's uh, Samuel as well was dedicated to God. So there's, you know, these are three examples that were dedicated for life to God. Um, but you can dedicate yourself to God for, you know, you could dedicate yourself to God for a short time. But obviously you might say, well, what does that mean for us? In the, and certainly what's that got to do with praying and the word of God? And the point is, um, when you're seeking God, you, you're, it's very difficult to find God when you're just carrying on with business as usual right um that's why you may set yourself some time apart to pray and fast um but th- there's also other things you can do to set yourself apart but i think for me the whole thing about being sanctified or set apart for god is just the discipline it's a discipline to say yes the, you know the, the word the bible doesn't say that i don't have to go on facebook it doesn't specifically say so but i know from experience that going on facebook um, you know, it just makes it difficult for me to concentrate. It's just too noisy. Facebook is too noisy for me. It's too got, there's just too much information sharing. I've got, there's just too much to process. I just, I have no time to uh, seek God, you know. So those are things you start to notice get in the way. So you could sort of dedicate yourself either for a period of time or for life as a lifestyle. But the point is you're disciplining yourself. You're making the effort to seek God. You're making the effort to say, God, I, I just want you. And I want to be as close to you as possible. God doesn't make you do it. You choose to do it. But there is a reward. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He does reward you for seeking him. He rewards your heart. The fact that you're choosing, it, no one has to make you do this. And again, um, you know, the, this is to encourage you. to. Do, you don't have to wait for your pastor or your church leader to encourage you to, to even pray and fast, to encourage you to do away with certain, you know, um, certain parts of life that are, you know, like, like I say, social media, except where you need it, say, for work and stuff. Um, but you can minimize. There's just certain things in your life you may choose to minimize simply because um, they, they, they just help you hear God better. OK, um, this is not set in stone in the word of God, but it is something you may choose out of your own volition. You may choose to say, God, I just want to hear you. And all these little things in life, all these some of these things that are the conveniences of modern day living. Actually, no, they, they stop me from hearing you. They're too noisy. They just I don't need that. I need to hear from God. And again, uh, the word of God says, draw nearer to God and he will draw nearer to you. Um, and hand is the reward of those who diligently seek him. So this is to encourage you. These are just some of the little ways we can set ourselves apart as we seek God. Um, clearly, the, the, you know, set, being set apart is a thing. It was a thing even back in the Old Testament. And God defined it. This is this was actually God telling Moses how a person could set themselves apart physically through the Nazarite vow, right? So that means it's a thing. 
you can wait for the Holy Spirit to inspire you and show you how to best set yourself apart for God. But the point is no one's making you do it. You're choosing to because you're seeking God and God loves that. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Have a lovely day.